Welcome to the Private Practice with Soul podcast. My name is Dr. Brooklyn Storm and I help private practice owners align their business back with their soul's calling, with their big vision and with their soul's purpose. Unlike other private practice coaches, I've traveled the world in search of spiritual resources, spiritual tools, education and information so that you can have the transformation that your soul desires and needs so that you can up-level your business. How much fun is this? I love it so much. Guys, if you're not already a member of the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group, please check out the show notes. I would love for you to be there. In the meantime, thank you so much for pushing play today. Let's begin. Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Brooklyn Storm, and I want to welcome all of the new subscribers and say thank you so much to people who've been listening for a while and continue to listen. I really appreciate you more than you could possibly know. So today I was sitting here and I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you today. And, you know, I'm looking around my room for inspiration. I'm seeing what would feel really aligned to talk about I'm thinking, should I share with you how I've got this new system of staying organized <laughs> because I have a very feminine brain and uh, at the moment she likes to be distracted. You know how you... Um, I don't know, you go on to Canva to create something, for example, and next thing you know, you're resizing it and adding videos and, you know, changing the fonts. And next thing you know, you've been really busy and you've lost an hour, but you've got nothing to show for it. Um, so I created this new system where basically I've got um, – color-coded sticky notes <laughs> of what I need to do for different areas of my business each day and uh, they're either side of my computer and it's so funny because they're on the left and on the first of the month well this is the first time I've tried it but um, at the start of the month the left hand side of my wall was full of all these sticky notes and now it's the first week in and the sticky notes are starting to move over to the other side. And I have to say, there's part of my masculine energy that finds this very satisfying. <laughs> I don't know, is it just me? It, it's like, you know, I'm not just ticking off stuff. I'm actually doing what I'm meant to be doing. <laughs> and I can see the progress. So that that's the first thing that I wanted to share with you because it seems to really be working for me. The other thing that I want to share with you too, um, I want to refer back to those two podcasts that we did on energetic selling and marketing because as you know, like I wouldn't share this stuff with you if I didn't do it myself. And uh, I have to say, like honestly, this morning, I just had the best call ever with this really, really lovely lady. She was so nice. You know what it's like when you just feel that connection with someone? Like, I'm so fortunate because I've had a chance to work with so many of you and we have felt that connection too. And you know what I'm talking about? It's just, you know, like I came away from that call buzzing, like just feeling so energized. It was the best feeling ever. I could feel my energy sort of, you know, bubbling to the surface and I couldn't stop smiling and I was trying to keep myself sort of calm. But, you know, at the same time, just loving being in that bliss state. So if you haven't started listening to those two episodes on the energetic marketing and selling, absolutely go back and have a listen to those when you get a chance because they're super powerful and I think you're going to get a lot of benefit and you'll start to see pretty rapid improvements to your practice uh, when you start to implement them. So the next thing I did, <laughs> I know it's a bit of a story, isn't it? The next thing I did was I thought I'm going to consult my cards and see what comes through for me to talk with you about. And you wouldn't believe it. Well, actually, you probably will. <laughs> um, I'm using the I felt called to use the Work Your Light cards by Rebecca Campbell. Um, I really love them because, well, they're not the kind of vibrant pastel-y colors and they've got the gold foil on, you know, um, personally, I don't find them that great for going into my subconscious mind visually because I don't think they have too much detail. Maybe I'm just someone who needs more detail. I don't know. Um, but the meanings of the cards and what she writes about them uh, is really cool and it does resonate with me. But what I was going to say was uh, I shuffled the cards three times and <laughs> the same card jumped out. <laughs> and 
I know you know what I'm talking about, ladies, because if you've got cards, I'm sure this has happened to you too. So I'm taking it as a sign that the universe wants me to share a story around alignment, which is really funny, isn't it? It's like it kind of come full circle in a way with this podcast because when I first started the podcast, it was talking about um, manifesting and law of attraction. And as you know, you can go back, I believe in total transparency. So I haven't changed any of the titles or the podcast cover, but you can go back through, um, you know, the back catalogue, if you like, and you can see the evolution of the podcast. It started off as being called Manifest Change. And the reason that that came about um, was because I finally got myself into a place of alignment. That was around the time when I realized that psychology wasn't such a great fit for me anymore because, you know, I was starting to feel resistance from within uh, around working within the constraints of the Medicare model. And that was how I was experiencing it at the time. Now, everybody feels it differently, um, but for me, it felt quite constrictive and I didn't know much about alignment back then. Um, all I knew was something was off <laughs> uh, and I didn't really know what to do about it because I had a lot of fear. I thought, oh my goodness, what if I, you know, what do I do with this? Like I know that I want to be exploring more of the spiritual stuff, but it's kind of not cool in, in the psychology work that I'm doing and, you know, definitely can't do it under Medicare, definitely can't do it under NDIS. You know, what am I going to do here? Do I have to have a side hustle? So I was kind of going through all of that and uh, eventually took the plunge. And you know what? It was like within a matter of, well, it was very quickly, actually, people started to notice a change in me. And I think when they say that they saw a change in me, it was really a change in my energy. People would tell me I was glowing, send me messages asking me, you know, was I taking special vitamins now? Um, you know, <laughs> was I getting more sun? Like what What was it? What They wanted to know um, why I suddenly looked and, and, you know, was coming across as so happy. And the reason why was because I was finally in alignment and I hadn't experienced that before. You know, um, don't get me wrong, I loved psychology, but it was never really my goal to, to become one. I mean, it became my goal, but the reason that I found myself moving in that direction if I'm totally honest with you, was I didn't know what I wanted to do back then. You know, you're just a kid, aren't you? <laughs> like when you go to uni. Um, and I wasn't a very sort of street wise, wise kid. I'd have very sheltered upbringing. So, you know, I had no clue what I wanted to do. My mother was a psychologist while well, she was studying psychology at Monash University. And she was in her I think second or third year of her bachelor's when I started. And the reason I started uh, my bachelor's, um, you know, two years behind her, we had the same lecturers, the same classes, the same textbooks, the same everything. Um, she's just two years ahead of me, as I said. <laughs> I don't know why I'm belaboring that. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Was because, yeah, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do um, in terms of my career, but I knew uh, I had to get one because I wanted to be able to look after myself financially. Um, I saw what my mum was studying and what she was learning. I saw her textbooks on the desk at night time. I used to stay up and have a look at those because they were so interesting. And I just thought, mm, this looks really interesting. And it felt very natural to me. It's, studying psychology was something that never really bothered me for some reason. And I was never a bright student, but for some reason psychology just felt very natural. It just came to me. I don't know why um, I got high distinctions just about all the way through. I did a triple major. Um, I did summer schools and everything trying to, you know, well, I had to back then to get off study <laughs> because you had to be, oh, it was ridiculous. And, and you had to back then when I got off study, you had to pay it all back as well. <laughs> very different to how it is now. And I had my hex and I think I've finished paying that off now, I hope. But anyway, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I saw that she was doing it. I thought, oh, this looks um, good. You know, I think I could handle this, blah, blah, blah. And so I just did it. And you know what? I enjoyed it and it was great, but it never really felt like it was my dream. 
And you know how people say, well, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Well, when I was growing up, I really, really, really wanted to be a ballerina or a dancer. But the problem was I was chubby. I still am. <laughs> um, that's okay. But I was also a bit pigeon-toed, which is you don't want a pigeon-toed ballerina um, or a chubby pigeon-toed ballerina at that. And then when I got a little bit older, I don't know where this came from, but for some reason, I really, really, really wanted to have, I know this is not okay to talk about now, but I'll just mention it because I want to be honest. Um, I used to really want to have a tobacco shop, but the type of shop where um, you could buy, you know, those really ornate pipes. And I think I had a fascination for these pipes because my grandfather used to have a pipe and I used to see him tapping his pipe. He used to come over, um, you know, on weekends and he'd be wearing like this beige cable knit jumper and he would turn up at the front door and, you know, I think I was about as tall as him. He was quite short and he used to have very white spiky beard you know like it was kind of shaved but maybe you know two days ago or something and he used to have a pipe and I remember him tapping it out I remember him filling it up I remember the smell of the pipe I just had all these really really beautiful memories of of that and then at some point or another I think my father smoked a pipe I think I saw that once or twice but I definitely saw my grandpa do it a lot and so maybe because it had a fond memory for me that's why I wanted to do it but um, of course it's like not cool (laughs) and it's probably frowned upon so I haven't gone down that path and no I don't want to do it for herbal things Um, I'm just happy to let it go but that was my little dream when I was growing up so of course I couldn't do that um is that am I limiting myself there I'm not that's reality isn't it yeah I thought so (laughs) so what's all this got to do with the card from um, the deck from the work your light cards by Rebecca Campbell well basically um, it was through being able to tune in you know as a psychologist after so many years 20 years or, or 20 odd years or whatever it was working as a psychologist having this niggle inside it was being able to get to a point where you know it was like something's got to change here you know how sometimes you just you know that something's a little bit off but you just try and ignore it and you just back up and you get on with it and you just keep going about life but then one day it's not really that something happens it's just more like one day you just know (laughs) you kind of get over yourself and you say do you know what I'm doing it like this can't continue well I had that moment and uh, yep that's when I made the decision and I planned to resign that's what I did and then it was by getting into alignment that everything changed for me Um, it was the opposite to what I expected I thought I was going to lose clients I thought I was going to struggle financially because of the Medicare thing that I wouldn't have access to etc etc but it was actually expansive I got to do the work that I'd always wanted to do Um, and it's not all counselling. I got to do coaching work as well. I got to do teaching and education work. I got to do workshops. I got to do media stuff. Like my whole world just opened and my energy became expansive as well and I just fell in love with, well, I don't even want to call it work because it doesn't feel like work to me. It just feels like the best thing ever. And I think that's what alignment is. It's when, um, you know how when, what's a way of saying it? I was was thinking about the magic robot. I don't know if you ever had one. I might be showing my age now. But when I was growing up, there used to be this toy called magic robot. And he used to be magnetic. And it was in like this great big cardboard tray. And you used to have to ask a question, press the robot down in the middle of the question, um, you know, start to turn him a little bit. And then the robot would spin around and magnetically point to the correct answer. Like it was pretty cool. But it's kind of like, that's what I mean in terms of alignment or, you know, how um, you've got a level and the bubble isn't quite lining up. You want to get that level right. That's what alignment is and that's what it feels like it feels like everything's just right where it needs to be and when you're in that space 
your whole world opens up in new ways that you would never have thought possible before. And you just become this version of yourself that is limitless. Like, honestly, you feel like there's nothing that's beyond you. You feel like you just trust everything that's meant to be for you is for you and it's going to be there for you and it doesn't matter what happens in in the world or whatever it will be there for you and that's what I really love about doing this sort of work and helping you know that it's okay to listen to your gut instinct it's it's okay to listen to your intuition but you know what it's not enough that you have to be open to take the next step and implement whatever that intuition is guiding you to do. And for me, it was changing career. That's like one example. Um, But for you, I guess, how do you know? How do you know when things are off? How do you know when things are misaligned? And and what are we actually talking about? Well, um, the way that you know is it's just this sense that you have that something isn't right. Now, maybe it's about a fee that you're charging. Maybe it's about a referral you've just taken on that you wish you hadn't. But but it's something that you just know. You feel it in your bone. You feel it in your waters. You just know something's not right. That's, I believe, your energy, your higher self, your higher consciousness, your soul, your inner guidance, whatever it is, telling you, hang on, we veered off path a little bit here. And if you want me to feel better and relax again, you have to bring me back on on track. And the only way to do that is to let go of this other thing that's, you know, putting us off course a bit. I think a lot of the time, though, we don't listen to our intuition because we think, oh, there's no place for intuition in private practice. Oh, you shouldn't use it when you're running a business. It's it's not reliable and you should just use formulas and strategies. But here's the thing. As women, one of our gifts is the ability to intuit. It's part of our divine or our sacred feminine essence, this ability that we have that allows us to divinely know what's right for us. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says, you know what's right for you. What about a time where maybe you've made a decision for yourself? Maybe you want to enroll in a course, right? Maybe you want to go and do a cake decorating course or something and you're so excited about it and you just know it's going to fill you up. Well, (laughs) not literally, I mean like fill you up spiritually. Um, And then you go and you tell your friend about it and your friend's like, what are you doing that for? Oh my gosh, you know, are you crazy? Like couldn't you spend your money on something else? And then there's part of you that starts to feel a bit yucky about that and maybe you withdraw from the course and so you withdraw from the course but then guess what? You still feel really yucky about it because You really did want to do that course. So then you go back and you enroll, but you don't tell your friend. (laughs) You know what I mean? Something like that. It happens sometimes when women are enrolling things as well, like supervision or mentoring or coaching, you know, they they feel like, oh, this is exactly what I need. This is, um, I know this is going to fill my cup. I know that I'm going to be expansive. I know that this is exactly what I need right now. And then I'll go and talk to somebody else about it and they'll think that they're crazy, you know, for, for doing it. They don't understand because they're not in the same space that we are. <laughs> and, you know, if you, if you've got some Somebody who's a little bit, I don't know, maybe not sure of herself, she can be swayed by that. And then she's going to say, oh, actually, I'm not going to go ahead with it anymore. And then she feels a bit yucky, right? She's made the other person happy, but she goes to bed that night feeling a bit defeated or a little bit deflated because she really wanted to do it. You know what I mean? So alignment is being able to recognize when everything's going right and also when your energy is telling you something needs to be adjusted and then take that next step and say okay what do I need to do and from there step three is actually take that action yep so that's what it all kind of looks like and the reason that I'm sharing this with you is because, well, yes, this card came up three times. I also wrote a post recently about alignment. I think it was last week or the week before that had a lot of interest. So also, let's not forget, 
it's Tuesday tonight. So tonight is the new moon. Um, it will still be a new moon tomorrow, but tonight is the new moon and it's the new moon in Virgo as well. And I think it's also a super moon. So there's like heaps of energy that's happening around you at the moment. And this is energy that's asking you to connect back into your spiritual self. You know, that's what that Virgo energy is about. That Virgo energy is about how do I stay in my feminine essence? What do I need to feel safe to make a decision? How can I support myself to move forward with this choice that I'm making or in my private practice or whatever it is? So um, tonight, although it's Wednesday night, when you hear this, it's still a fantastic night for you to do some work around writing your intention, but also take it a step further and turn the intention into, you know, a set of two or three action steps. And then if you really want to, take it further again and go and write those action steps down in Haloxy as appointments or in Core Plus or Clinico or whatever you're using. Go and put them in your online diary as little like block out the time for them so that you actually do them. You know, this is how you start to experience progress and transformation in your practice. It's got to be more than listening to my boring voice. <laughs> um, it's got to be more than reading the books. You have to actually get to a place where you're ready to say, okay, I'm going to test this out for myself. I'm going to try this out for myself. I'm going to do it. And start with small things first. That will allow you to build your confidence while you're learning how to do this. And it is so, 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 so cool. Honestly, you are going to love it. Now, as I have said to you so many times before, connect with me if you want help with any of this. You know how to find me. <laughs> um, of course, I'll put my email in the show notes for you. If you're a counsellor in private practice as well, in September, we've got a whole lot of free stuff happening for you. We have... Um, a giveaway. We've got a giveaway of three sets of 30 days of self-care cards and so excited to give those away. They're for um, counsellors and, <clears throat> you know, psychologists and social workers choose for themselves or with their clients. And it's a set of cards, these 30 cards that have five mindfulness and, and meditation activities on them um, that only oh, five that have one activity on each card that only takes about five minutes to do and you can do them either by yourself or with the children or with your partner something like that so that's one thing that's happening so that's really really cool I'm really excited about that if you want to join so that you can go in the running to get the cards um, I'll put the link in the show notes for you as well the other thing that's happening is on Sunday the 19th of September at 3 p.m Australian Eastern Standard Time uh, Kylie is going to run a breathwork workshop for us it's called breathwork experience and you can come along to that that's free as well and it's also going to be recorded and um, it's free to attend but if you want to watch the recording uh, later and you're in the group no problem you can do that um, and then what else have we got or oh, somebody doing energetics uh, which will be amazing and oh I've lost all my little pieces of paper what else oh I was just typing up somebody's things this morning we have, oh, who is it? Okay, we've got lots of things <laughs> happening, things all over the place. Um, oh, yes, we've also got uh, boxes that you can create. So there's a mystery box giveaway. And the way that this works is the boxes are um, created by a fulfillment company. You can either choose a pre-made box or you can create your own custom box and everything that goes inside it is to support mental health and well-being and um, it's all designed on the principles of dialectical behavior therapy or DBT. So super useful. If you want to enter so that you can win that draw, um, it's free again and it's something that um, as a therapist practitioner, you could absolutely use in your practice with your clients um, if you didn't want to use it for yourself. So, yeah, so much happening. And we've got guest speakers um, coming on and everything. So, so much fun. And also, um, this all came about because we had a conversation in the ACPPO about how counsellors as frontline workers were coping with COVID themselves. You know, um, it's a whole different level, isn't it? Or different, not level, um, experience uh, working with self-care with uh, counsellors 
compared to with clients, right? And so this was super, super, super important. And we recognized that there was a need to support the members of our group more. And we were just, you know, I put out the call for self-care experts in our group. And honestly, I've just been overwhelmed by the love and the kindness and the gratitude of so many members that stepped up and said, I want to contribute. I want to support the members. What do you need? How can I do it? You know, and having these conversations with them all has just been so powerful. And it's been my highest honor um, to be able to sit with them and to receive support on behalf of the group so that then we can deliver that to help our members so that they can continue to do the beautiful deeper heart-centered work that they all do so I would love you to be part of that Um, just as I said click the show notes and you'll um, be guided to submit a join request and then we can just add you it's no problem so thank you so much for listening to another episode if you have any questions about private practice that you'd like answered on the podcast uh let me know like i love to answer your questions <laughs> okay have a beautiful day happy new moon and here's to the next lunar cycle bye Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast today. If you're looking for clarity, if you need help with branding, your processes and bringing everything into alignment with your soul's purpose for your private practice, head to the show notes and click the link for more information about the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group. You are going to love it. I can't wait to see you in there. Thanks so much for listening. Bye.